Hi everybody, it's another uh, episode of Building Wireless Sensor Networks. This week is uh, Chapter 8, the final chapter in the book, which is titled uh, More to Love. First, let's get right down to it. We got the, uh, let's look at the hardware, hardware setup. We have here is our uh, Zigbee, our TMP36 temperature sensor, our 3.3 uh, voltage regulator, our Zigbee Series 2 on a um, SparkFun Zigbee breakout board. This is the same hardware that we made for Chapter 5. Um, it's identical hardware. This is, uh, this is the room temperature. I've made two other sensors. This is one of three. This is the room temperature. Uh, the other one is in the, uh, the fridge, and the, other one, the third one is in the freezer. So we're going to have three temperature sensors uh, to display today. Um, Let's have a look at our software. Here we have processing. This is almost the same sketch we used in chapter five, except that behind the scenes, um, I changed the software so that it uploads data to Zively. The uh, sketch provided by, the sample sketch provided by the author, lists um, PatchTube. Unfortunately, PatchTube changed its name to Cosm which then, again, it, it changed its name to finally Zively. Um, so some software changes are required to get it to upload to Zively successfully. Um, so I made those changes. And so the series of sequence of events go like this. Pretty much the Zigbee, once a second, will read an A to D reading off of the TMP36 and send that value to the coordinator once a second. The coordinator will pass that value off to the processing sketch. The processing sketch will do some calculations to convert it to a temperature. And then once a minute, it will upload this the current temperature to for that channel to the um, to the Zively software. So let's go have a look at that, shall we? So what do we have here? We have three channels. Corresponding to our our open air 26 degrees Fahrenheit or Celsius, I mean, to our room temperature. Here is our fridge, which is at pretty much zero, and uh, our um, freezer, which is at minus 21. What's great about Zively is that it gives you graphs. It'll show you the graphs. So here again, we've got our room, fridge, and our freezer graphs, and it's pretty cool because it auto ranges. So it'll tell you pretty much what range you're in, so you don't have to uh, miss a squiggle. Like this guy, I'll show anywhere between, this looks like minus 18 to minus, looks like 22, 23. And I'll show all those values for the declared range. Uh, you can also change your range. Like, for example, this is six hours. You can go from five minutes, I'll show you the last five samples, to, let's see if I can get there, three months. Of course, I don't have three months of data. Only got a couple days, maybe a day and a half. Uh, so let's go back to one day. One day. And so what we have here is uh, the historical data for one day. Which is pretty cool. Uh, let's see here. The processing sketch has an interesting feature where it will automatically, dynamically add a temperature sensor as they're found in the system. Um, this means that whoever transmits a sample first will show up at the coordinator and then be automatically added. So then you can dynamically add new nodes as they come on and have them automatically uploaded to Zively. Uh, but it also means you gotta be kind of careful because if you restart the software and you're items start in a different order, then you're going to mess up your channels. Here, let me, uh, let me show you this dynamic, dynamic um, creation here. Let me unplug my samples, unplug my nodes, run the software again. Should come up, there we go. Okay, let's add the room temperature. You can see it's pretty fast. There we go. It's reading 27, 27 Celsius. We'll add the, um, the fridge. That one's reading pretty much zero. And we'll add the freezer here. 
eventually there we go and it's minus 21 so room fridge freezer all right well that was everything that went right with this project but um unfortunately it doesn't always work out the way you want it to so there are always always problems for example let's have a look at our our temperatures I'm not sure if I really believe these temperatures here we are our current room temperature is showing as 26 26 degrees Celsius unfortunately that's about well what is it here let's go look on my thing uh, it says about 80 degrees is what it's saying so if we go back to Zively we can see it's also reflected here Unfortunately, my room temperature sensor that I have shows 73, so that's a discrepancy right there. 80 to 73 is, is about a 7 degree temperature range. Uh, it's probably not ideal. Um, also, if you look at the fridge temperatures, it's hovering around zero. Now, I have a real problem with that. If you're hovering around zero, you should see, you should see things in the fridge like freeze and thaw, freeze and thaw. So then I should get some ice when I pull out things like my orange juice or water. Unfortunately, I don't see any of that. So I would, I would assume that the temperature is uh, higher than this. And minus 20, or minus 21 here for the, f for the freezer. I'm not sure if I trust that one either. Um, if that was the case, I'm pretty sure I'd be burning myself on my ice cream when I take it out. Uh, I like my ice cream hard, but I don't like it like rock hard. <laughs> so it's one of those things. Another thing, like I discussed earlier, the processing sketch will dynamically add items as they appear. So whoever sent an ADD measurement first will be recognized by the, the, the processing sketch and it will be added first, which is great. Except when you need to restart this guy. I had a problem where, here let's have a look at the problem where I had, um, I got an error in my processing sketch where it couldn't find a, a start byte. Now I don't know what happened, I don't know why, I've got to debug it some more. But what turned out, I had eight hours of the same sample sent. The processing sketch will send to Zively the last sample it has. Whether or not it's fresh or not, it doesn't care. Uh, that's another thing I probably got to fix. So I got a nice plateau here, about eight hours of plateau until I realized what was going on and uh, fixed it. We got a nice graph instead of a plateau. Um, I don't know, that's something I have to, I'll have to think about. It would be great if I could get the Zigbees to identify themselves, like say I'm a temperature sensor and I'm temperature sensor one or, or your location, and then have that upload to Zively and that's something I'm going to have to definitely look into. Uh, to make this a useful project instead of more of a hobbyist project. Um, another thing is the software reliability. Uh, missing a start byte is probably unacceptable. I don't really need eight hours of the same sample uploaded to Zively. I should either throw a, throw a stop in there or, um, or better processing for the text so that we can at least miss one sample but still find the next uh, start byte. Yeah, I don't know. That's, that's something, I, again, I'm going to have to look at. Um, overall, I'd say this, um, this was a pretty good project. This was Chapter 8, More to Love, uh, which was really awesome because I got to uh, figure out how to upload to Zively. Um, I'd say this is a pretty interesting book. Uh, I learned quite a bit about Zigbee's and the Zigbee Protocol, and I would highly recommend picking up this co a copy of this book. And uh, I want to thank you for watching. Have a nice day.